Like I guess I was kind of a loner kid. I uh, spent a lot of time digging up bones in the garden. Not real bones, but like <laughs> chicken bones from shake and bake dinner. I've got a little toothpick set up on an excavation site and I'm digging them up. I basically want to be an archaeologist as a kid uh, after seeing Raiders of the Lost Ark. They did get me a dog, Bentley, uh, when I was a couple years older, but um, after a year of having the dog, my parents thought I wasn't taking responsibility for it, so they gave me one. I have a recollection of a frog when I was little. I have an older cousin, and he liked to show me cool things. What he thought was cool. And he took me into the corner of the garage and pulled out this frog. He said, check this out, and he cut one of the legs off with an axe. <laughs> then all of a sudden he handed me the axe and said, you do one. <laughs> Didn't really work. He got mad at me, finished the job off. And then I ran inside and told his parents. <laughs> his parents got so mad. And then he got so mad at me. Uh, then my parents sent me to uh, Camp Katagazoo, just outside of Calgary. There was a camp counselor named uh, Pebble. <laughs> take us to the fire and make s'mores perfectly. <laughs> and she'd tuck us into bed at night, I'd be waiting on the top bunk, and she'd come in and just like seal me in like a cocoon to the blankets. And uh, I remember reading stories to us, and she'd sit on this chair with her legs kind of like wide open. And she wore these like tiny jean shorts. I remember that. Probably my first crush. He would always teach me things. He, uh, yeah, he taught me about sex. That was the kind of cousin that I have. <laughs> penis, vagina, vagina, penis, something or other. He didn't know what he was talking about, but all he knew was that it felt good. <laughs> oh, I still remember jumping around in the backyard through the sprinklers with our friends. And we would go into the bathroom and look at each other's things. And then, all of a sudden, I was having sex. And my parents found out. And then I just kept on doing it. I kept on getting caught. I kept on doing it. And I kept liking it. I kept on doing it. And I kept on getting caught. <laughs> but then I just stopped. Hey, Ed, no worries. No worries. So heard today Ray Manzarek from the Doors. Oh, I know, so heartbreaking. Isn't that brutal? I was in the Doors cover band when I was 18, so really, I feel like I kind of am him. What'd you play? Were you like keyboard? No, I was guitar, but oh really? I felt like I was in the Doors, man. <laughs> like high school, yeah. Yeah, in high school. Oh, I hate people. Oh, darn. I can't yeah. Do that. How about Led Zeppelin? You ever listen to Led Zeppelin? Yeah. Actually, my first kiss was two days and confused. Really? Uh huh. Wow, that seems intense. I wasn't listening to uh, music in my first kiss. It was actually like a John Hughes movie. First time yeah. I kissed a girl. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was in her bedroom, and we were just hanging out. Then we were rolling around in her bed and kissing, and it was all spitty. <laughs> <laughs> and then we heard her mom come home. Fuck. And then she pushed me out of the bed and then shoved me in the closet and slammed the door. <laughs> and I'm looking through the slats in the door and she's like, No, I'm not doing anything. Oh my god. Her mom comes in and says, What are you doing? Nothing. And then she left and she ushered me out of the house like I was a nobody. That's, that must have been scary. It was scary, but it was. Totally exciting at the same time. Yeah. Way to go. Did you win any money? No, but I got one. Sweet. You don't win anything for one. <laughs> so, hey, do you remember Electric Avenue? 
Calgary. Oh, in Calgary? Yeah, yes. fuck, right? Coconut Joe's. Coconut Joe's. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that I used to go there all the time. I started getting introduced all these other bands like uh, Sugar Cubes and... Uh, York, before she became totally weird. Right? <laughs> oh, but she's still great. But she's still awesome. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, there was this DJ there and uh, we used to... Um, I, my friends would be like drinking and dancing. Oh, here we go. Oh my god. We're <laughs> getting so high. How did we get so high so fast? I don't know. I love these. I love oh. these, even though I feel like a grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> oh. Yeah, I just, my friends would be like dancing in the club and I'd be just like up in the DJ booth talking to this DJ, right? Oh yeah? Just like talking about music and everything. Like and... CCU Music Factory? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's exactly the time really? period. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Fuck yeah. But we like, you know, we started hanging out. We just like really got along. Same taste in music. <laughs> Eventually we moved to Vancouver. Got a place in Vancouver. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, look, someone dropped a shoe. Oh my god. <laughs> Loser. <laughs> oh. So gentle, those swings. <laughs> All the gentle swings. Love them. <clears throat> so yeah. Yeah, I moved to Vancouver, right? And, but eventually it's like, we're, I'm living in this apartment with this guy, but it's like, I basically started a band, putting out in the Georgia Strait. Yeah. Met this bass player, this girl bass player who was like, She's just like amazing, right? Uh -huh. We just totally clicked on music. We start jamming all the time. But then the guy I'm living with, like, he's getting all weird about it. What, like possessive and shit? Yeah. That's weird. It kind of sounds like my first girlfriend. She was totally possessive. Oh my god, sorry. Okay, really? she, she was totally possessive. I don't yeah. know how she managed to do it, but she got all the courses I wanted to take full. So I would take only the courses she wanted me to take. That's shitty. I know, I don't know how it happened. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yes. oh, maybe I'll hold on to the yeah, <laughs> 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 yeah, That's brutal, but I know what you mean, like that weird like possessiveness, right? I <laughs> felt that exact same thing. I think maybe I can put myself yeah. <laughs> FASTER! Can you hold on a little bit? Okay, I can try, I can try. Anyway, at some point I just like decided to give up, right? <laughs> It's like, yeah. I love that rock. Oh my god, it's so much fun. I love that. <laughs> oh. but it makes Should we go me... get a beer? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Let's do it. Oh. oh my god. Yeah, so you know the you know the same thing, eh? You kinda of dealt with the same same kind of issues? Yeah, she Weird. was like totally possessive, didn't want me to hang out with my friends or anything. And really? I just dumped all my friends and just did whatever she wanted me to do. It just felt mm. really crappy. That's fucking <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Wow. Mm -hmm. I love it here. <sighs> well, I mean, with me, it was like, so this guy, like, so I'm like, listen, I, I'm, I need to move out because this is like, you know, feeling kind of weird. Yeah. So I told him moving out. I go out jam with my dad. I come home. Dude, he's like, he's got a bus ticket. He's leaving the next day back home. Whoa, to live with? To move back in with his parents. Oh my God. And everything we had in the apartment belonged to his mom, basically. So like I helped him pack up and it's like the whole apartment is totally empty. And all I've got is like a lamp, like this fucking Ikea lamp, my guitar and some clothes. How did that feel? Amazing. Really? Oh yeah, like I'm in this empty yeah. apartment. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Michael, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Michael. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Hello. I know. Yeah, Eight? I kind of feel like <laughs> that is a good song. And his app looks awesome in the video. <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, true. my my girlfriend and I was just like I've had enough of her controlling my life, so I just yeah. said, hit the road and I became a hippie. <laughs> Yeah? Can you see it? I had dreads. Hmm. Actually, with that hair, I bet yeah. you grow some pretty sweet dreads. Yeah. How long were they? I'm like, that hair. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So what do you mean hippie? Like, you started smoking pot? Started smoking pot. Started listening to Lenny Kravitz. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Just that going to rule, just live. Right? That's right. <laughs> it was free love, right? So mm. I would just go out with my friends all the time and do drugs and hang out with girls and get drunk and... It was awesome. 
I have a friend actually Party that. Dinners, right? Yeah, I have a friend that I go and do that with all the time. Really? Yeah. Cheers. <clears throat> That's nice. And uh, actually, we went to this one party. He invited yeah. me to. He's like, dude, I uh, I want to go to this party, but I'm bringing this girl. Don't you hit on her. I'm like, what? Did you used to like, hit on this girlfriend? No, they just flocked to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Like, it's like, I don't know. He felt well, threatened. Yeah, I, or, I, I don't know. I see. They'd feel like safe around you or something. Yeah. yeah. Well, I know. I was like, went to this, showed up at this party. It was not long after this. The band's broken up and stuff. Yeah. This house party. Yeah. And I meet this girl, and it's just like, second I see her, it's like instant chemistry. You know really? What I mean? Yeah. I know. I kind of felt the same way with this date. It was like. <laughs> meet me over for a beer and uh, she said yes so we, we go for a beer a couple days later we, turns into two beers turns into three beers and then it's like middle of summer it's like 20 degrees outside and we go walk down to Trub Lake and uh, there's this dock down there right so we, we go and walk down the dock and it's just like electric summer feelings right and, and we kiss on this dock it was like my first like real kiss, you know, and uh, man, and that was all things happened then. But a couple days later, I saw her again, and then uh, she invited me over to her house, and uh, went over to her house a few days later, and we slept together. And this is like my first time with like a woman, right? And oh my god, it was just like the best night of my life, best night of my life. I met my date, my best friend's date, and sparks flew. And I didn't know what to do because there is a dude code, apparently. But moments later, I saw my friend making out with my date. So then I decided, okay, then I'll make out with his date. Then we started dating, and then I fell in love. And we hung out all the time. She once said to me, I heard you're a badass. So don't do anything to jeopardize my trust in you, okay? Okay. So I wake up in the morning and uh, I'm still there in her bed and her phone rings and she goes out into the living room to talk on the phone. I guess it's like her ex on the phone. And she comes back in the bedroom and she's like, you gotta go. <laughs> so, that was that. So, you know, first time it ended that quickly, but it was like suddenly I realized like who I was and, and what I wanted. It was like for the first time in my life and now I was going to have to start telling people. She came to me and said that someone she'd been hanging out with recently admitted an attraction to her. And she said, no, no, I'm dating somebody. But, in a trusting relationship, I'm going to tell my partner. So she did. And I got really jealous. Even though she said, nothing's going to happen, I'm with you, nothing's going to happen. I got really jealous. And I went out to one of our other infamous parties with my friend to blow off some steam. And I got really high and really drunk. And I blacked out a lot. And then I found myself in the bathroom looking at a guy have sex with a girl that he doesn't know. And that guy was me. And I just realized that I cheated on her. And I cheated myself. 
So the first person I told was my best friend. She came over to visit and I'm standing in the closet and it's like I can see her come in through the slats in the closet. And she opens the door and I come out of the closet and I'm like, hey, just coming out of the closet. <laughs> and she laughed. <laughs> it's like, great, right? Um, and then I had to tell my sister. So we're cleaning the kitchen and I'm down on my hands and knees, like cleaning the kitchen floor. I'm under by the plumbing. <coughs> just cleaning, we're listening to music. And I'm like, so I date girls now. And my sister's like, yeah, I know. Sweet, right? <laughs> Then I had to tell my parents. And then I had to tell her. <clears throat> I want to be honest, truthful. What do you think she did? Hit the rope. And so I did. And I felt the lowest I ever have felt in my whole life. So I called my mom and the first thing she said to me was, go see a counselor. And when your mom says go see a counselor, you go see a counselor. So I called my mom, and uh, we're talking on the phone, just talking about random stuff. And I tried a couple of times, first time I called her, I was like, hey mom, I'm smoking. <laughs> and then the second time, I'm like, hey mom, I stole your car once when I was 16. <laughs> and she was disappointed, and, but I was more disappointed. So this time we just talked about the weather and stuff and I'm like, oh my god, I gotta say this. So I just sum up all my courage and I'm like, mom, I'm gay. And there's this long silence on the other end of the line. And then she just blurts out, oh my god, you're a les? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I left a message for my sister on the answer machine, just press play and I was like, uh, mom called me a les, okay, bye. <laughs> So I went to counseling. I figured I needed to figure out who I was. I felt like I was totally in control of my life, doing making the right decisions. But I kept on hurting people. So I stopped drinking, stopped doing drugs, stopped having sex, even masturbating. <laughs> I don't know how that's possible, but. <laughs> I felt so raw. And so my mom's two weeks have gone by and I haven't heard back from my mom yet. And you know, when you're waiting for a call from someone, you're just, your mind just goes in circles, right? It's like, is she humiliated? Has she told my dad? Uh, what does he think about this? Um, you know, maybe if I was there in person and I, and I could have told her in person, she would have like understood better. But finally, after a couple of weeks, uh, my mom calls and we have this great talk and she's like you know when I look back and I look at like your whole life you know it, I guess it makes a lot of sense and I think yeah you know there's times in your life when you're just like when your real self you are just being your real true self and then there's times where you are not being yourself and she says to me that she had picked up this book uh, by Ellen's mom about how Ellen's mom dealt with her daughter being a <laughs> <laughs> And she says, you know, I realized I'm Ellen's mom. <laughs> so now I feel like I'm just on the path to be a better man for the best woman that's waiting there for me. So I feel like I'm on a path to be a better woman for the best woman who's waiting for me.